Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to be talking about prokaryotic translation. So remember the central dogma, DNA to RNA to protein. DNA to RNA through transcription, which we've already talked about. Now we're going from RNA to protein through translation. Now over here on the side, we show you that there's supposed to be processing of some sort. That's typically only in eukaryotes when we actually have to get that mRNA strand from the nucleus out to the ribosomes. Since both transcription and translation in prokaryotes are both done in the cytoplasm, we don't need to do processing, so X that out. And since transcription and translation are done in the cytoplasm, they can basically almost be done on top of one another. We'll see that in a second. So, translation overview is from messenger RNA to proteins. Remember, proteins are made up of amino acids. There's about 21 of them that prokaryotes use, and they are the building blocks of a protein. And the amino acids are held together by a peptide bond. Let's look at an overview animation of what translation looks like. And you might get this big picture before we go into detail. In prokaryotic cells, translation is initiated by formation of an initiation complex consisting of the 30S ribosomal subunit, formal methionyl tRNA, and messenger RNA. The 50S ribosomal subunit then joins the complex. Proteins called initiation factors are also involved, but are not shown. The 70S ribosome has two sites to which transfer RNA-carrying amino acids can bind. One is called the peptidyl, or P site, and the other is called the acceptor, or A site. There is also a third site called the exit, or E site, where transfer RNAs are released. The initiating transfer RNA, carrying formal methionine, binds to the P site. A transfer RNA that recognizes the next codon and carries the second amino acid then moves in to the A site. The formal methionine carried by the transfer RNA in the P site is then joined to the amino acid carried by the transfer RNA that just entered the A site by a peptide bond. The ribosome now advances a distance of one codon, and the transfer RNA that carried the formal methionine is released at the E site. A transfer RNA carrying the next amino acid now moves into the A site where the anticodon on the transfer RNA matches the codon on the messenger RNA. The ribosome shifts down by a distance of one codon. As the shift occurs, the two amino acids on the transfer RNA in the P site are transferred to the new amino acid, and the second transfer RNA is released from the E site. The ribosome continues to move along the messenger RNA, and new amino acids are added to the growing polypeptide chain. Elongation of the polypeptide is terminated when a stop codon moves into the A site. A stop codon does not specify an amino acid and does not have a corresponding transfer RNA. The ribosome dissociates into the 30S and 50S subunits and the messenger RNA and protein are released. Let's take a closer look. Layers. We've got the mRNA, the rRNA, and the tRNA. We've got a codon, which is a set of three RNA bases that are on the mRNA. We've got the anticodon, which is a set of three RNA bases on the tRNA that are going to be complementary to those codons on the mRNA. And we have the amino acids, so there are about 21 again, and they're the building blocks of proteins. Looking at the ribosome, since we're in, in the cytoplasm, we use a ribosome. Ribosome's got the 30S subunit and the 50S subunit. When they come together, they form a 70S subunit. Next, we've got the tRNA. Yes, the tRNA actually looks like a T. And it carries an amino acid on the top of it. And at the bottom of it, we've got an anticodon. Remember, the anticodon is going to be three bases that are opposite or complementary to the codon on the mRNA. Now, the tRNAs are actually found all out in the cytoplasm, so they're just waiting out there to find the correct codon. 
Translation initiation happens in four steps. First thing is that the 30S subunit binds to the initiation site, so it recognizes a site a little bit ahead of the start codon, and then also the start codon here. We've got three initiation factors that help bind that 30S subunit onto the mRNA. It's initiation factor 1, 2, and 3. Next, we have the specific initiator tRNA that brings in the formalin methionine. You just need to know it as methionine. And it comes and binds to our start codon. Now, you can remember that it's the start codon because it's AUG. Auburn University is great. War Eagle. And... Um, the factor 2, initiation factor 2, specifically helps bind that initiating tRNA to the start codon. Next, the 50S subunit comes in and actually creates the complex, the um, whole ribosome complex. And when it binds, it triggers the release of all the other initiation factors. Take a closer look at what happens when we have a full ribosome. So we've got three sites that are created. The first site is the acceptor site, the A site, second site is the P site, and the third site is the E site, or the exit site. Overview on elongation. Remember, elongation is going to be to extend, to elongate. The ribosome complex moves along that mRNA, exposing new uh, codons. The tRNA anticodons, complementary to the codons, come in and add an amino acid to the chain elongating the, the protein amino acid chain. Now, yes, I do have it down here, but we're going to take a closer look at the next page. So, here are the steps. First off, the tRNA binds to the A site. The initiation tRNA moves to the exit, and the tRNA in the A site moves to the P site. As it moves to that P site, it's going to add the amino acid to the chain, through a peptide bond. As it moves, it leaves the A site unoccupied so that a next uh, tRNA can come in. Step three is this new tRNA comes in and binds to that A site. The tRNA then attaches the amino acid with a peptide bond as it moves to the P site. And once the amino acid has been attached to the chain, it, the tRNA moves to the exit site and exit. Termination. Termination has uh, begins with a stop codon. There are three types of stop codons. UAA, UAG, and UGA. And it appears in the A site. There are no tRNAs that can bind to the stop codon. So instead, a release factor comes into the A site. And it's either release factor 1 or 2. And what it causes is the whole complex to dissociate or break apart. So the mRNA is released, the tRNA is released, the ribosomal subunits are released, and the protein is released. Now this protein is in a long chain right now. So the final step to making a protein is that it has to shape, it has to do a form, so it folds into its correct conformation. So again, that protein after it is released must fold into its correct conformation or shape so it can go out and do what it's supposed to do. A few things to remember that a single mRNA is not only translated once. It can actually be translated many times and even at the same time basically. So um, as it's being transcribed the mRNA is released and we see here in this picture that we not only have one ribosome that is translating it, but we have three ribosomes translating it at the same time. So transcription and translation can basically happen at the same time. I'm going to end with this nice overview. So check it out, study it, know it, and I hope you have a good night.